when you gotta go, you gotta go. Hello, friends of the family, welcome to another exciting episode of Rink Life. Today's episode, like most of my episodes, is nothing like any of the other episodes that you have seen so far. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of a conversion van that I built. Well, I didn't actually build the van, but I did the conversion in the van. And it's not actually my van, it's a friend of mine who commissioned me to build the conversion in this van. They gave me three requirements that I had to make. First, the person that's going to be staying in this van is over six feet tall, so they wanted it to be comfortable for someone who's six feet tall. Luckily, I am just over six feet tall, so it's easy for me to use myself of the model to make sure that everything fit. The second requirement that they had is they wanted the kitchen to be separate from the living quarters. So if you cook maybe something with a lot of spices like Indian food, it's not going to smell up the whole van. So it's going to be separate and it's going to vent towards the outside. The third requirement that they had is that it has to be easily removable from the van. The van that they're building this in right now has a lot of miles on it and they don't know how much longer it will last. So they want the option that if they get a different van in the future, the same model of van with less miles on it, they can easily take the conversion out of this van and put it into the new van. I believe that I met all of those requirements and they seem to be very happy happy with the build. This video is going to have two parts to it. The first part, I'm going to give you a tour and the general rundown of all the different features of the van. The second part, if you stick around for that, I'm going to go into more detail on how I built each of the different components. So if you're doing your own minivan conversion, you can maybe get some tips and ideas on how to do your own. So this entire build for all of the parts, all of the lumber, everything was less than $400. And it took me about 20 hours to do. So if you were working eight hours a day, that's only two and a half hours to do this entire build. So it's something that anyone can do. Something else I wanted to say is that this van is very small inside. So it was kind of a challenge to fit everything in there that I wanted to fit in there. I could have just built a bed in there like so many other people have done and just called it good. But I wanted to have all the creature comforts that a bigger van would have. So I've got a living room, I've got a kitchen, I've got a bedroom, I've got a bathroom, and I've got a dining room. All of the creature comforts that you want. One thing that I noticed none of the other van builds that I saw, none of the other minivans that I saw had, they none of them had a toilet. And when you're stealth camping, you've got to have a place to go to the bathroom. So it was important to me to find a way to fit a small toilet inside this build. So anyways, without further ado, come along with me and I will give you the tour. We'll start with saying that this is a year 2000 Toyota minivan. It's the first generation of Toyota Sienna, so it doesn't have the stow and go seats like the others. It's just a plain stealth minivan. Great for camping. No one's going to know that you're doing it no matter where you park. But let's go ahead and open this driver's door and see what's inside. Alright, so when we open the door, we go into what I call the living room. It's got the couch enough headroom that a six foot tall person can sit on there. And under the couch you have storage, two different doors to access that. Let me show you how easily the couch converts into a bed. So first thing you have to do is you have to slide the driver's seat forward. That gives you room for the couch to come out. Simply slide this. And voila, instant bed. Almost the same size as a full size, about five inches skinnier, but just as long as a full size mattress. And then to convert it back, almost just as simple. And voila, back to a couch. For dining room, stored under here. Little table. Now I've got a place to eat. Table easily folds away. goes under. The nice thing with a table like that is you can sit outside or inside depending on what the weather is like and where you're at. All right, so now inside the van, you'll notice that there's a black curtain here by the couch. Slide that curtain, and there you have where the toilet sits. Its own little room with some privacy. Let me show you, it's pretty tight to sit there, but a full-size adult can definitely use that area. Like I said, kind of a tight fit, but when you gotta go, you gotta go. And in case you got someone else in here, now you got some privacy. 
One other thing I wanted to point out is this curtain that goes across the front gives you some extra privacy. All of the back windows are tinted, so you can't actually see in from the outside, but the front windows are not, so I put that curtain there. It's double thick, so it doesn't let any light through. Because this particular model of van has a sliding door on both sides, the door over here is great to able to access that underbed storage even more so, so you can fit more stuff in there. And then if it was down converted into a bed, you could crawl out of either side. Another thing I wanted to show you in the front of the van is between the two front seats is just enough room for this electric ice chest. So there is your refrigerator right there. It plugs right into the cigarette lighter and keeps everything nice and cold. And now we're gonna move on to my favorite part of the build and that is what is behind this door. The kitchen. So you've got all the standard conveniences of a kitchen. You've got the sink, you've got running water. How cool is that? you got drawers. And in this drawer, you've got your little stove. Now if you don't want to cook here right next to the sink, I developed these tables. Just like that, now you can cook on the stove. We've also got under here, that's where your water storage is. So I've got the fresh water tank, the gray water tank. Very simple setup. And then in case you want a little bit of extra counter space, this table does the same thing. A couple chains hooks up. Now you've got an extra table. Also, it's easier to grab these jugs out of here while the table's up like that. Under here, big storage area, great for pans, great for whatever. One thing we'll point out with this, this comes out. The point being that the access to the spare tire is under here. So if you need to get the spare tire out, there's still enough room to get to that little, the little bolt. But otherwise, you've got an area there to store whatever you need to store. You'll notice there's a mirror here. Why is there a mirror by the kitchen sink? Because remember, this it doesn't just have a kitchen, it also has a bathroom. Well, obviously you're not gonna do anything in that tiny bathroom there, except use the bathroom. So if you need to shave, if you need to do makeup, if you need to do your hair, you've got a little mirror here right by the sink. Not the best mirror in the world, but it's gonna get the job done. We've also got a light. At night, this lights up this area very well, so you can cook anytime, day or night, use the area, use that to shave with, works great. When you're ready to put everything away, stove slides right in this drawer. And very simply, these unhook, that goes down. All put away. How simple is that? So there you go. That's the general tour of the 2000 Toyota Sienna conversion van build. We've got the living room, the bed that converts into a bedroom, the tiny little bathroom, the table so you have a dining room, the kitchen. What else could you need in a tiny, tiny minivan? One or two people could comfortably stay in here, even live in here if they wanted to. A thing that most people can't say about a minivan. So now, if that's all you wanted to see, go ahead and give me the thumbs up, subscribe if you want to, and end the video here. But if you're thinking about building your own minivan and you wanna see a little bit more details on how I did some of this stuff, then follow along for the other half of this video. So go ahead and start with the couch and how it's generally put together. This mattress was an old mattress that I got out of a teardrop travel trailer. Originally it was one solid piece, but I went ahead and cut the foam. It got a little bit complicated with the sewing, but essentially what I did was I just took another piece of vinyl, sewed it along the back there, and then it's two separate pieces of foam so it folds, but it stays together. So for the couch, the bed, I wanted it to be as simple as possible. Not only to 
put together but also to make. I didn't want to use any expensive components. I didn't want to use too much time to do it. So I came up with the simplest way I could. Essentially what I did was I took one full size sheet of cabinet grade plywood. Cabinet grade plywood is important because one side of it has been sanded smooth. Sometimes both sides of it so it's not going to catch anything like a standard piece of plywood would. And it's not that much more. So it's one piece of plywood cut all the way down the middle and that gives you your full size bed. Or it slides to give you the couch. Now one thing that you'll notice about this piece of plywood is that it's shorter the one on top is shorter than the one on bottom. There's a reason why that is, and it's mostly because of the toilet. Because right now, if I was to try to slide this bed out, it's gonna hit the toilet. So what do I need to do? I need to slide it towards me a little bit, and then it clears the toilet just fine. And then, right now the seat's all the way forward, but that would hit the seat. So for the seat to come all the way back, you slide it back towards the toilet. It seems simple, but it works really well. And then it's lined up so when it's in the bed position, slid all the way back, that's when you can open these drawers. The actual construction of the bed is very simple. Just two by fours on the bottom, two by fours going up, and then the piece of plywood on the top. I made this 12 inches high. That way there's enough room to sit above it without hitting your head, but also enough room to store everything underneath it. I'll show you the bed from this other side so you can get kind of a better idea on how exactly it's built. It's simply one two by four that's the length of the bed, which happens to be 75 inches. A short one, I think that's 10 and a half inches going up to another solid two by four going across. I built two of those identical, one for this side, one for the other side. On the bottom, they're not connected, but I did put a two by four along the top to connect it and make it a little bit more stable. And then simply screwed that piece of plywood. That three quarter inch plywood is very sturdy and will hold up any weight that you wanna put on it. There's a couple screws that are holding through these two by fours into that back part and that's what makes everything sturdy. Because this isn't attached to the van, it's pretty much just being held in place by the fact that it fits so well in here. In order to get the ice chest to fit between the front seats, I actually had to take the plastic molding off. That gave me almost two more inches because originally there was cup holders between the seats that wouldn't allow that ice chest to fit there. We wanted to have some sort of refrigerator, but there just wasn't room anywhere else. So this is the only place we could find to put it. It fits there just fine. The seats still slide back and forth just fine. And it works really well because that's where the cigarette lighter is. So it plugs in. Plus you can eat in your seat if you don't feel like climbing in the back or from the couch you can access it. So it's very accessible, fits perfect, almost like it was made for that. Next thing I'm gonna show you is this curtain. How do you hang a curtain in a van? You can't just screw it into the wood because there's no wood there. So what I came up with is these plant hooks that have those big spreader butterfly attachments to the back. I drilled a small hole through this plastic, put it through and it's spread out. So essentially this plastic is what's holding this up. Not super strong, you can't hang off of it, but when all you're doing is holding a curtain, it works well. And then I also put a little bit of Velcro here, helps keep the curtain closed better. You can see the construction of the kitchen from back here. There is no two by four construction for the bathroom area or the kitchen area. It is just simply the cabinet grade plywood that's been screwed together. Because it's three quarter inch plywood, there's plenty of room to put screws in and build your cabinets out of that. One of the most challenging parts of this entire build was cutting the wood to match the ceiling. I didn't do it perfectly. You can still see little gaps here and there, but I think I did pretty good. That took me a while to get it just right. I had to kind of guess at it, then hold it up, cut some more, hold it up, cut some more. It took me about four times for each piece to get it as close as I could. You'll also notice that the bathroom has that slant to it. That's to accommodate the rear window. Now moving on to the back, they should all be fairly self-explanatory. These are just very simple hinges, the same hinges on both tables. Very simple hooks, the hook the chain. These chains I got at Walmart, they're actually designed for hanging plants. 
so they came with the hooks on them. Super simple design. I'm not sure how much weight they can hold. They can definitely hold stoves, anything that you would put on here under normal circumstances. We'll see longevity wise. I have a feeling the weak point might be where these screw into the wood. If that does become a weak point, I would probably recommend drilling it out and actually having a nut on the bottom, a different type of eyelet. But for now, I think that's going to work just fine. The drawers, I built them very simply out of 1x4s and a 1x6, screwed it together, got these cheap, they were about $6 a set for the drawer slides, made sure that was all nice and square so the drawers would fit in there. As you'll notice, the drawers are a lighter color than everything back here. That's because they're a different wood. Everything else is made out of that one sheet of cabinet grade plywood. So I've got two sheets total, one for this kitchen area and one for the bed. So this sink actually came out of an old travel trailer. It's used, it's got a couple cracks in it. It's not in great shape, but it worked great. And then this is one of my favorite parts. I was trying to figure out how to get running water. Obviously, there's a few different options I've seen. I could have put a big jug up here and just had gravity feed it into the sink. I could have gotten one of those little hand pumps where you hand pump it, or I could have gotten super fancy and put a battery and an electric 12 volt pump and done it like a standard travel trailer. But I found this at Walmart of all places for $25. What it is, is this is actually designed to sit on top of one of those five gallon jugs so you can dispense water. This is completely cordless. It's rechargeable with a USB port. They claim that it will pump 50 gallons per charges, but you can charge this with your cell phone charger. So it works amazing for this. It's an electric pump without having all the complicated wiring that so many pumps have. And you just push the button and you've got running water. I did have to get extra hose for this because the one that came with it was not long enough to reach the bottom of that jug. So this is just 3 8 inch outer diameter, 1 quarter inch inner diameter hose. The other thing is to make this mount, I simply got this 2 inch coupler. This is a 1 and a half inch coupler that screws down into the cabinet. It's got a hole in the middle for the pipe to go through. And then this, actually I guess it's a 1 and a half inch the outside of a one and a half inch coupler ended up being the perfect size for that to fit onto. This mirror also came from Walmart. It was like $5.88 and it literally just sticks on. There's no mounting, no screws, no nothing like that. Just peel off the back, stick it on, works great. The light, about the same price, about $6 at Walmart uses four AA batteries, it's LED so it lasts a long time, but you don't have to do any type of wiring. That's the nice thing with this setup. I didn't do any electrical wiring at all, and we've got lights, we've got running water, we've got everything that we need. So under here, let me show you what I did and how it works. I had to get a little bit creative and unconventional to make this setup work properly. These are three gallon jugs. They came from Walmart. Again, about $5.88, I think, less than $6. I got two of them. They're nicer than the round ones because they're skinnier, so they don't take up as much room being square like that. The freshwater one, super simple. I simply drilled a hole through the lid that came with it, ran the pipe down there, and that's all you need. For the gray water one, to get it out, how do you get it out? Well, that's the question. Well, the way that I decided was I just didn't screw the sink down. Slide the sink out, out of the way. The gray water comes right out and you can empty it. I left the cap in the drawer so you can put it over the lid so it's not spilling as you carry it wherever you're going to dump that at. And when you're ready to put it back, you simply take the sink, put it back through that hole. Just like that. So there you go. Now we're at the end of the video. I've shown you the van. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you think this is a cool project, go ahead and give it the thumbs up. I put a lot of work into doing this. I hope to be doing more builds like this. So if you're curious to see what else I can come with, 
with, go ahead and subscribe. Right now I'm not doing videos super often, but I will try my best. I also do other videos of exploring and cooking and stuff, so go ahead and check out my channel. See what else, if there's anything else you like. Go ahead and give it the thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions about this van build, go ahead and leave it in the comments or send me a message. I don't know, does YouTube do messages? Either way, let me know and I will do my best to help you out with that. This is, like I said, a 2000 Toyota Sienna van, so a different type of van is going to be slightly different, but I think you can use the same general concepts. Anyways, that's all I have for now, so until next time, signing out.